Yo everyone, what's up? Recently, Leo tweeted a clip of his Roy and a YouTube video titled I could be the best Roy. In this video, let's talk about how likely it is for Leo to actually become the best Roy in the world. I think to answer this question, we should look at the characters he played in the past and also which players are in the competition for the title. Like with any other character in Smash Ultimate, being the very best Roy player is no easy task. However, it's not like Leo hasn't earned this title for multiple different characters already. So can he do it again? Let's go over some arguments that support and refute this claim. Besides all the skills Leo has, his most praised one is his spacing. And which characters are your best fit when you are godly at spacing? Of course Swordies and especially those that have really large hitboxes that can pressure the opponent relatively safe and then react and punish their next option. Now some might say that Roy isn't a traditional sword fighter that rewards good spacing due to him having a sweet spot at the hilt of his sword, whereas characters like Marth for example with his tipper mechanic does. However, I would say that this is only partly true. Of course, there are benefits of hitting with the sweet spot instead of the sour spot, but hitting the sour spot often leads to combos or frame traps. If you're as godly at spacing as MK Leo, then you can probably get the best of both worlds. You can get the strong hit when trying to kill your opponent, but you can also make use of the sour spot to get the combos that you want. Many people that only follow competitive Smash since Smash Ultimate probably don't know all too much about Leo's performance in Smash 4. Very brief, Leo started out as a Meta Knight main that upset Mr. R but then switched to Marth and became one of the best players in Smash 4 really quick. Now this may sound like Marth carried him to being one of the best but that wasn't the case. Besides maybe Mr. E to some degree. There was no one close to being as dominant and consistent with the character as Leo. While some newcomers may only know him as the Byleth main he is nowadays or the unbeatable Joker player he was pre-pandemic, the Smash 4 players will remember his Marth. And Marth is a character that pretty much teaches spacing the easiest. You can hear and see every tipper you land due to the satisfying sound effects, increased damage and of course knockback. So again, Leo is really good at spacing and also learned how to use sweet and sour spot hitboxes from an early age onwards. I just talked about Leo's Smash 4 math and how some ultimate newcomers may not know about its existence. But did you know about Leo's Chrome? In the early days of Ultimate, Leo played Ike, Lucina and some Wolf and Cloud here and there. But at some point he was actually playing around with Chrom. And of course, when a game is fresh, a top player like Leo will try out many characters to see whose playstyle will fit him best. At the time, Chrome was regarded as one of the best characters in the game. The character, however, got a couple of nerfs later on. For example, Nintendo nerfed Chromicides so that Chrome players in fact do die first when going for this cheesy kill confirm. But back to the topic. Chrome wasn't just this fun character that Leo tried out in Friendlies or in Elite Smash. He actually attended a tourney in Korea called Uprising where he put his Chrome on the map. In doubles he won the event with his partner Raito by mainly playing Chrome and in singles he played a mix of Joker and Chrome. In fact, in Grand Finals against Gakt's Ness, he stuck to the Chrome. So why am I bringing up his Chrome, you may ask? Well, because Chrome and Roy are Echo Fighters, meaning just like Marth and Lucina, Roy and Chrome are very similar fighters. If he was able to make the Chrome work, which most of us would agree is lower on the tier list than Roy, at least nowadays, then why wouldn't he be able to play Roy and do well with him as well? I think the characters Leo does best with are characters that have this certain level of clutchness built into their toolkit. For example, his Smash 4 Marth had Tippers, his Ike had Nair Apea, his Joker has Arsene, 
the Byleth has things like up B, Bear, at Ledge, F smashes or Shield Breaks. And Roy has side B, which is basically Cloud's limit cross slash, but at all times. So I do think that Roy does bring the clutch factor to the table that Leo strives with. And now let's talk about some counter arguments. Result wise, Cola is the best Roy in the world at the moment. Cola is also placing top 8 at most tourneys he attends and has wins over many top players such as Louis Mani, De Bas, Didi, Goblin and Glutton. He was also very close to beating Leo once, but since then Leo has never made their sets look close again. Now, I personally think that Leo has it in him to be a better Roy than Cola, but Cola has tons of experience with the character, he has matchup knowledge that Leo does not have yet, and due to that I don't think it's gonna be an easy task to outshine Cola's Roy. When I watch Roy players, most of them play quite aggressive and as I see it, the character somewhat rewards aggression. I think Goblin might be one of the more patient Roy players, but I could be wrong here. Anyways, I'm not sure if Leo is the super aggressive close-up in your face player, but of course when he has Arsene or is about to lose, he activates this kind of super safe and super aggressive power state where he's basically untouchable, but I don't know if playing aggressive at all times would suit him. For example, when he played Joker, who doesn't have the range that Byleth has, he made good use of his projectiles, gun and the side B AR to find openings. To put everything together, I think that Leo has the skill to become the best Roy in the world. He makes it seem like he's the best with pretty much every character he puts his hands on. Even his Rob with his Proto Banham looked like one of the best Robs in the world. But I don't think it will be an easy task since he has to outperform Cola and also I'm not really sure if Leo actually wants to invest the time into Roy. This might just be a phase where he has fun with the character but won't play him in any tourneys. Or maybe it will be like his Corrin, which he only played in a few occasions, but now seemingly dropped. What do you think? Will Leo put in the hours and make the Roy work on tournament level? Do you think he would become the best Roy if he wanted to? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.